Hi everyone, welcome to my latest vlog. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, my favorite short stories that are also recognized as one of the most critically acclaimed stories ever. Uh, it's a bit uh, challenging to be able to produce a story that would turn out to be recognized as one of the greatest in comic book history. And in that respect, uh, both Marvel and DC have uh, come up with a lot of stories that span maybe one issue, two to three maximum. But those stories are not only remembered by the respective generations who, came, who were lucky enough to read their first prints, but rather young generation who are slowly and steadily becoming more and more accustomed to reading comics whether the digital versions or the actual prints that are available in the form of graphic novels or trade paperback collections. The, these stories uh, represent a particular in comic book history that changed either the character or the overall concept of superheroism completely, if not partially. And uh, uh, it's been a long time waiting because uh, some of these storylines I had read them partially because I had one or one issue that was part of the uh, series or some uh, I came across some information when I was going through some characters history and all that and uh, I've been lucky enough now to be having most uh, impactful stories that have been produced by both Marvel and DC. So here it goes. I'm gonna be introducing you to each and every one of one by one. I'm gonna be talking about X-Men Days of the Future Past. Obviously, I need to wear I need to be wearing Wolverine T-shirt. Uh, the full title is Uncanny X-Men Days of the Future Past. Uh, this was written by uh, Chris Claremont and the art was done by John Byrne. Uh, the duo that defined the X-Men in the 80s, uh, especially the early 80s, late 70s era. Uh, later on, John Byrne had some disagreements and he went on to write and draw Fantastic Four. Uh, along with uh, he has some he had a stint with the Avengers and he is also uh, known for uh, his Superman uh, relaunch post uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, superb artist as well as a writer and then you had Chris Claremont. Chris Claremont if you say the name the first thing that comes to mind are the best ever X-Men stories ever written and one of them is Days of the Future Past. So one of the mutants uh, who is living in an Orwellian nightmare from in the future travels back in time to inform X-Men that something really bad is about to happen, uh, some very important event that would change the discourse of human mutant history. And uh, we all have seen the adaptation of that story uh, uh, as part of uh, Fox's uh, production of X-Men movies. Uh, the movie was again aptly titled uh, Days of the Future Past and uh, the good thing about that movie which I liked was that Wolverine remains the central character much like uh, in the comic itself. Uh, although it's not uh, uh, like how to say 90% uh, adaptation they have made some changes and all but still uh, the, the movie adaptation in my opinion has done justice with the actual artwork that was uh, sorry at the actual comic book that was published uh, or in fact the, the comic book issues that were published and uh, this is a, a really standout issue because in the in essence this further allowed Marvel to explore uh, uh, stories whereby mutants would be coming in from the future to fix the past and one of them happened to be Cable, uh, the Apocalypse, uh, the famous mutant villain who uh, plays a very important role uh, for the family of against the family of Scott Summers, Cyclops and Jean Grey 
and all and uh, it was a defining uh, storyline Now I have the honor of talking about two very important stories of the first ever superhero Superman created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster in the golden age of comics he is the one who started the modern concept of superheroism and these two stories are worth reading struggled whenever i read superman stories to enjoy them as much as uh, i enjoyed batman stories but two stories stand out for me and this uh, uh, these stories both of them were written by alan moore alan moore the creator of watchmen moore is known to be one of the best writers uh, from the bronze age and uh, he wrote these two stories and the pairing was a dream come true you had alan moore on one side writing the plot and then on the other side for one story you had kurt swan kurt swan the famous uh, silver age bronze age uh, artist for superman uh, his artwork has always mesmerized me uh, because when i was a kid i did come across old comic books and the drawings that he did for superman remain stuck in my head to this day and uh, it's either him or Jose Luis Garcia Lopez these two remain my all time favorites when it comes to uh, DC comics uh, artworks uh, with all due respect to jim lee with all due respect to uh, neil adams uh, i love i love these guys i love their artwork but you know there's something about these two and this story is the trend setting story would superman continue going on as superman or would there be a time where his uh, vi- uh, rogue his villains his arch enemies uh, wise up and decide to finish him off once and for all uh, will there be an end for superman these are some very important questions and you know exploring the end of superman this is the story that talks about it which story is that whatever happened to the man whatever happened to the man of tomorrow what i can say about that is that uh, it was published in the 80s and nobody had expected this uh, marvel uh, may or may not have explored this because i cannot recall an issue from what if comics that would be ex- exploring about any of the marvel's flagship characters at the time that how would they end or something correct me if i'm wrong but superman being the icon the iconic superhero the first superhero uh you know his story is being explored uh in a in a way that was that's not expected at all it had an enormous impact on the readers it it showed other creators it inspired other storylines in fact if any of you have read x men the end that story seems like pretty much inspired by what alan moore had done all those years ago it's a very good story on its own but obviously we cannot forget and we cannot expect it to top what alan moore had done uh, along with kurt swan now staying with superman there is another story that explores uh, a very different side of uh, the son of krypton what's that side we often think and I I am one of those that when I was a child growing up I used to think that you know Superman is if he were to be real he would be the luckiest being in the universe because he could fly in the air faster than a speedy bullet he could uh, he 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 is more powerful than a locomotive well anyways he's way more powerful than a locomotive I mean he can bring down buildings and all that the heat vision the x-ray eye uh, x-ray vision the cold breath and i mean so many superpowers that are there and i would think that 
I mean, if I were Superman, I won't, I won't be having any other wish because what do I need? I mean, if I have this kind of physique, if I'm as handsome as Superman, if I have, uh, let's say, uh, admired, loved by beautiful women like Lois Lane and Lana Lang and many more as we see in the comic book world. But Alan Moore tells us that's not the case. Superman also wishes that there are some things that didn't happen in his life. He wishes for a different life. He he even though he is he has loving foster parents, uh, he is welcomed by the community, he is loved by Metropolis, people of Metropolis, the Justice League members are his friends. He has his own version of an ideal world where he would be part of that world. Uh, and in that respect, when you start seeing it from his eyes, the way Alan Moore has uh, plotted uh, the story, it really, you know, makes you feel more connected to uh, the son of Krypton. And this for me is the main thing. I mean, why I read Marvel more than DC, why Batman is my fa- uh, most favorite compared to Superman, is because when I see Gotham, it reminds me of the world I'm living in. Because the world I grew up in was very different when I was up to my teenage it was so much optimism people I feel it people were good people were helpful towards one another people cared about each other but now when I see my world around me and I I feel worried I find a lot of negativity I do I'm I struggle with this uh, uh, notion of trusting uh, anyone blindly much like Batman because Batman doesn't you know uh, he and he believes his gut if he if he if he is having some doubts about someone he is never going to be accepting him or her or them with open arms whereas Superman Wonder Woman Green Lantern these characters would give benefit of the doubt now if there is a story that really uh, you know made me love Superman even more this is one of it and this beautiful story as I've told you was written by Alan Moore and the art was done by uh, Dave Gibbon Uh, Dave Gibbon the famous British artist who started with Alan Moore and Watchmen uh, one of the best comic book artists both of them British but they did one heck of a work and by the way this this issue uh, is just one shot it's uh, Superman annual I'll be showing you the cover photo and in that respect I mean like it's one of the best uh, stories ever written. Gwen Stacy died. A story that shook the comic book industry from the readership standpoint as well as from the publisher's point of view. And uh, I'm lucky enough to be wearing a 70s print of Spider-Man because uh, that's the closest thing I have right now. So here it goes. The night Gwen Stacy died. This story, in my opinion, lot of you might disagree but this story remains for me uh, the most shocking if you will shocking because you never expect a flagship character to be defeated and to be defeated in a human manner it is often an expectation that the flagship superhero, whether it's Spider-Man in Marvel or Superman in DC Comics, or most of the superheroes, whichever the publishing house you can choose, they will never lose someone they love the most. And in this case, the love of their lives, Uh, whether you want to call them their girlfriend, of uh, Spider-Man later on he ended up marrying Mary Jane Uh, you never
never expect something uh, some kind of a loss that would result because of them and the night when stacy died is a story because gary conway the guy who wrote the story he wanted to kill off gwen stacy because he didn't find the character having much depth and he wanted to basically uh, connect spider-man with mary jane watson who he believed that had more depth compared to uh, her counterpart now as someone who has read old stories that involve gwen uh, for me it was like uh, you know uh, a match made in heaven if you will peter parker always struggled in high school because of uh, his wimpy look uh, he was being pushed around by flash thompson and much of his classmates and next thing you know there is this beautiful blonde girl uh, who falls in love with him not because of his looks or anything but because he had a good heart he was out there to help people he was kind hearted uh, he came from a humble background and all sorts and somehow they started to connect now uh the stacy family is the symbol of tragedy within spider spider verse especially the mainstream marvel universe it's a symbol of tragedy uh do not compare uh this gwen stacy with spider gwen because that's an alternative timeline where peter parker uh, is killed and gwen stacy lives on to become spider gwen to avenge his death and uh, other crimes now This story was the most unexpected storyline ever. Gwen Stacy gets killed and in the most merciless fashion. The rage, the anger, the story, the dialogues, the art. If you haven't read this story, then you have read you haven't read anything good. my advice to you is that these short stories that i have shared please do the effort go to amazon buy them read them let me know of your views because uh, you know these stories are totally different than your expectations that generate from the movies that you have seen in the last decade these stories actually define superheroism these stories actually tell you that superheroism is not something to boast about rather it is an epic struggle an epic struggle which in our world every noble human being whether they were prophets or they were non prophets had to go through especially the reason i find marvel more relatable is the fact that you do realize that people who try to do good in this world are ridiculed are humiliated are challenged uh, every step of the way in their life and most of the marvel heroes and especially the flagship character like spider-man uh, they have this thing and to see him and un- being unable to save the love of his life at the hands of his arch nemesis a character that hates spider-man to the core and it will leave no stone unturned just to get his uh, revenge for whatever reason not only against spider-man but also against peter parker because he knows who spider-man is and he doesn't care about uh, ethics morals the relationships he just wants to f- he just wants He, he's just evil he's just pure evil if that would be the right word and in that respect that story changed superheroes forever whether they were dc or whether they were marvel yes some of you might argue that uh, namer had lost the love of his life but we need to remember one thing that namer uh, was an anti-hero number one secondly he was not the flagship character and when we talk about captain america his the love of his life didn't get killed off 
killed off in the sense like brutally at the hands of Red Skull or something like that. Whereas here it is, this story is the most amazing because it is about Spider-Man's defeat. It shows that good people do end up failing in life and how they rise up from the 